If you're a cynical old sod like, well, me, you might think that cars like the Mercedes-Benz A-Class exist for one reason only, and that's to lower the entry point into a premium brand. Well, the new A-Class is set to change all that. In fact, Mercedes-Benz says it's its most technologically advanced car ever, and that includes the S-Class. On the surface, the A-Class is a small premium hatchback that competes in the space with cars like Audi's A3 and BMW's 1 and 2 Series. The third generation A-Class arrived in Australia in 2012 and it's done pretty well, with more than 22,000 of them out there on the road. The fourth generation A-Class is all new from the ground up. It's built on a larger platform, so it's longer, wider and taller than the car it replaces. That means that there's more interior space and more luggage room. And yet Merck says it's about 20 kilos lighter across the board. And Merck has held nothing back when it comes to technology. In fact, it reckons the A-Class offers tech that's not likely to show up in cars like its biggest C-Class and S-Class. Notice I didn't say features in bigger cars like the C-Class. I said it's not likely to show up. The A-Class will offer S-Class levels of automatic driving. It'll include industry topping safety as standard. It'll feature a new range of more powerful and more economical engines. And it'll debut a completely new way of interacting with your car. All this in the company's smallest passenger vehicle. At the moment though, it seems like we're buying more SUVs than anything else. Actually, scratch that. We officially now buy more SUVs than anything else. So why has Mercedes-Benz put all of its technological eggs in this A-Class sized basket? Well, that's pretty easy. The A-Class is a strong seller for the brand worldwide. And it's also the basis for other A-Class sized cars like the CLA and the GLA SUV. So while you will see a small SUV with this level of technology, it's not going to be for about a year yet. So let's take a closer look at the new A-Class. It's due to touch down in Australia in August, and the lineup will look pretty similar to the current one. The base car will be the A180, which loses its diesel engine in favor of a brand new 1.33 litre, or 1.4 litre if you're Mercedes-Benz, turbocharged engine, which is made in conjunction with Renault. We don't know the power figures for that one yet, but we'd guess it'd have to be around 100 kilowatts. The front wheel drive A200 gets the same engine in a higher state of tune. The best selling model is the A250, which will also get a new, more powerful 2 litre 4 cylinder engine as well as Merck's all-wheel drive system. All three are teamed with Merck's seven-speed dual-clutch gearbox. Oh, by the way, a replacement for the hottest version, the A45 AMG, is about a year away. As well, there'll be a less full-on version called the A35. You can check out that story on carsguide.com.au. Final specs aren't locked down quite yet but we know every A-Class will come with a version of Merck's Distronic Driver Aid System, as well as items like front and rear emergency brake assistance, lane change and steering assistance, an all new digital dash array, and 16 inch alloys as standard. As well, the A-Class sees the debut of an all new multimedia system called MBUX, or Mercedes-Benz User Experience. MBUX is the most sophisticated multimedia system that Merck has ever added to one of its cars. It's designed to work via touch or voice, and it uses technologies like artificial intelligence to learn your habits. Now that might sound a little bit like Rise of the Machines, but it's basically designed to work with you more intuitively. For example, hey Mercedes. How can I help you? I feel hot. I'm setting the temperature to 23 degrees. And that's a really good example of how it works. It tries to learn 
your language and the way you talk rather than using a standard set of commands. And MBUX has a lot of other features as well. It can even talk to other Mercedes-Benz cars to help you find a parking spot if you're heading to a certain destination in town. There is a big caveat here. These systems often work fantastically well on launches, but when you get it onto home ground, it doesn't work as well as you thought. So we will reserve our final judgment until we've had a bit more time to play with the system. Merck says the new A-Class has grown up, and that extends to the driving experience as well. It now sits closer to the road, and its wheelbase is a bit longer, while its larger, stiffer body has been isolated from the suspension to provide a quieter, calmer ride. I do wonder though, if Merck has focused a little bit too much on the tech in the A-Class. We're in the A200, and while it feels incredibly composed and refined, it's not as much fun as I thought it might be. The steering, for example, it's very light, but it lacks a bit of involvement. And the new 1.4 litre turbocharged engine is very linear and quite responsive, but it just lacks a little bit of pizzazz. Basically, the A-Class feels like it's a little bit too grown up when it still should be having a little bit of fun. Merck, of course, will argue that this is exactly what it wanted to achieve with this level of car, and the sizzle is set to come with cars like the A35 and A45, which will launch in about a year's time. There's no doubt that the three-pointed star has an incredibly strong brand presence, and having lower price models gets more bums on seats. But Mercedes-Benz has taken the smallest car in its range and made it possibly the smartest and safest of all of its passenger cars. How's that for going against the script? <laughs>